I spent almost $700 on PC parts from Amazon, and in this video, we're gonna put all the parts together and see if we can build a working PC. So I had three requirements for this PC. First of all, I wanted everything to come from Amazon and it all had to be one day shipping. So all of this stuff I ordered on like a Sunday morning and it came Monday, uh, Monday afternoon, so pretty quick. Second of all, I wanted this PC to have a disk drive. So I ordered a Blu-ray disk drive. Um, in this case also holds a disk drive. And third of all, I wanted this thing to be able to play new games, 1080p, 60 FPS. So I think we should be able to achieve that with this, um, but let's get started. So we'll start by looking at all the components I purchased and then we'll put them all together. So first of all, we'll start with the big hitter. We got the GPU here, which is a Radeon RX 6600 uh, supports 1080p uh, according to the box here. Second up we have our CPU which is a 5000 series Ryzen uh, 5500 and I'm a little concerned here because just, just listen to this. It sounds like we have some pins, some solder balls, something inside of this thing rattling around. You know, I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's like a, a twist tie that's, be that's bouncing around in here, but we might have to send that back and get a new CPU. I uh, also got my CPU cooler of course, pretty basic. I uh, also have its M.2 drive from Western Digital. Here is our Blu-ray uh, disk drive here, and uh, this actually costs like 80 bucks, which is kind of surprising. They still go for that much money. Next up, we have 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, got this nice little <laughs> blue DDR4 RAM. We're not going DDR5 because we're trying to limit our budget a little bit here. And next up, we have a power supply, pretty basic 80 plus bronze. But next up, we got the motherboard, which is an Asus Prime B450M-82. And this thing is it supports DDR4. You can see it's uh, Ryzen 5000 CPU ready. So we should be, I did a little bit of research on this and we should be good with this. And then last but not least, we have the CPU case. And this is the, <laughs> this one is actually very interesting to me because this is like the case you would see in like early 2010s, I think. Uh, it's very basic, as you can tell, it's like something that Dell would ship out. I had to buy this because First of all, my one day shipping requirement. Second of all, it has a 5.25 uh, drive up here, which supports a disk drive. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the CPU first and <laughs> hopefully it's not bouncing around in there. Oh, that's probably what was bouncing around is these papers. They were kind of loose in there because the CPU itself looks fine. Okay, so, so first of all, this is the rattling. Yeah, broken plastic, there we go. All right, well that's be better than broken pins, broken solder balls. And I did not even know it came with a, uh, a CPU cooler. I actually, I think I legitimately bought the exact same CPU cooler just on Amazon by itself because I didn't realize this one came with a CPU cooler. So that's cool. Well, I'll return this one and get it saved nine bucks or whatever I paid for it. But let's put this to the side now and I'll go ahead and open up everything else. So I'm pulling out the GPU actually and I just noticed this, it's not even sealed at all. It's kind of like a Nintendo package where they just don't seal anything, which is interesting because you could pull this out, use it, put it back in the package and send it back. Unless this piece right here is sealed. Okay, there we go. All right. All right. We got all the boring stuff out like the power supply, the uh, the, the RAM, the M.2, which of course is just absolutely tiny. I'm about to lose it. But next up, I want to pull out this case, which is, I don't know, I'm just, I'm very fascinated by a case in 2024 that doesn't have RGB advertised and doesn't have like a glass window on the side. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this thing. This thing is actually pretty small for, uh, it's kind of, let me, let me kind of stand it up so you guys can get a better look at it. But yeah, it's a bit shorter than the PCs I've seen recently, about the same length, maybe a bit thinner as well. And as you can see, both sides are just straight black. You got some airflow in there on the top, the back and the side, but no glass window, no uh, RGB shining through. Uh, we do have a built-in fan on the back, pretty basic, but you know, for 60 bucks, I don't really expect much more. So I like that. And then last but not least, let's open up our disk drive here, which I'm very interested to see. You just do not see these very often these days. I mean, nobody, nobody buys physical PC games. I don't even know if they make physical PC games really, but let's go ahead and open this up. And yeah, you can see it's an LG Blu-ray disk drive and it should, uh, should fit that slot right up there, which is nice. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, start building this thing. So actually one more thing real quick. I got the PC case open and there is one more case fan down here. So it pulls in air, obviously in the front, pushes out the back and we will obviously have our CPU fan, our GPU fans. And uh, yeah, I also didn't show you the front here, but we have our 5.25 drive right here for our disk drive. We also have a, that's probably a 3.5 drive there, which we're not, not gonna use. But let's go ahead and mount the motherboard first. All right, I got all the standoffs mounted in there. It came with two standoffs already mounted for some reason. I'm not sure if that's typical or not, but should get that in line there. Perfect. Uh, I don't think I missed any. Now let's go ahead and mount that down with the included screws. Actually, nope, I'm missing one right there. Mounted this bad boy in the wrong spot. Let me move that real quick. All right, there we go. Got the standoff fixed. Let's go ahead and slide this in here. I got the motherboard mounted down in there. And next up, we're going to put the M.2 SSD in there because I just find it to be like, the, you know, frankly, the easiest thing. So we'll kind of just slide it in place, clicks in, and then we push it down. We got to mount it to this hole right here. But I think I have this, I have this little standoff and screw here that I think are meant for the M.2. M All right, sweet. The standoff fit perfectly. Let's see if the screw fits now. And it does. Sweet. All right, I'm glad I kept this little packet around. I almost... <laughs> 
almost lost it. It's, e it's just easy to lose these little screws. And next up, we're going to put in, put in the RAM. So we have two 8 gigabyte sticks. They're nice and blue, no RGB, but these are pretty cheap, like $34, I think, maybe 32. Now let me look at this manual real quick and see if I can figure out which slots I need to put these in. <laughs> this is funny. I'm looking for the, the manual here and I find that the, the motherboard actually came with a disc. That's hilarious. I, you don't see that often, but I, I mean, I could actually use it. I, I might actually try it out later just because I, just because I can. All right, so it recommends doing A2 and B2, which you actually have stars right next to it. So that makes sense. You can get this mounted incorrectly. Cool, got one stick in place. Next one should be easy enough. Let's push that clip down, push the RAM in. It always feels like it's gonna break something, but nope, it's all good there. Uh, next up, I'm gonna try to mount the CPU. I've never mounted a Ryzen CPU, so we'll learn this together. All right, so we got the socket latch uh, undone right here. We gotta line up this pin or this little arrow with the arrow on the corner here, which you can barely see. I was, I thought I was in that corner, but I couldn't, just couldn't see it. So I had to look for like five minutes until I could barely see it. But now we just need to lay, lay this in here, make sure the pins fall into place, and then we'll just uh, push it down. This part always feels wrong, but actually that one squeezed into place a whole lot easier than the Intel one. The Intel one, when I did the Intel one on my, my expensive PC, it just felt like it was breaking, but got that in place now. Let's go ahead and uh, install our fan here, which appears to be a very easy process. And the interesting thing here is the CPU fan that they gave me actually came with a layer of thermal paste on it, which is awesome. I mean, I touched it a little bit, but it should be okay. So, I mean, we'll, we'll just run with this and see how it runs. All right, guys, we're getting the CPU cooler mounted down there. I had to take off these two brackets that were actually included by default on the motherboard. And then on the back, of course, there's a bracket. So I had to screw into that bracket. Not quite done yet, but we're, we're making progress. All right, guys. Well, I just got all these headers mounted here. Of course, we have our RAM, our M.2, our CPU fan all mounted, but I just found that I uh, forgot to put our port cover on, um, which now I cannot fit without the motherboard taken out. So actually that wasn't as, wasn't as hard as I thought it'd be. Um, all I got to do is remove all the motherboard screws because of course the CPU fan is and everything else is mounted straight to the motherboard. So I just got to pull this out a little bit, slide our cover in here and see if I can get that to fit now. All right, guys, now next up, we're going to go ahead and mount this uh, power supply in here. Should go down here in the bottom left hand corner uh, like so. So let's see if we can get that to fit and hook all these cables up. All right, guys, we have the power supply mounted in here and we have this big old rat's nest right now. And I just kind of realized that I need to clean this up a little bit, but I actually don't need to be too pretty with it because the case is fully enclosed. There's no glass. There's nothing. I don't, I don't have people peeking in and saying, oh man, your PC looks like crap. Next up, of course, the big boy. We got to install the GPU. We're going to take off this little piece. Of course, we have a little bit of a, a few satisfying pieces to peel off as well. But anyways, guys, we got our two little pieces out right there. We'll go ahead and slide into our PCI, PCI slot down here. If we can get our rat's nest out of the way, I honestly probably should have plugged this in earlier before I started plugging in all these cables. This is a mess. I'm glad I don't have a glass case on the side. All right, but anyways, we got everything mounted in there except for one last piece. The most important piece, our Blu-ray drive, which I'm very excited about. Let's go ahead and see how we mount this in here. I think I, do I need to pop this piece out somehow. Okay, so <laughs> I had to take the entire front piece off by lifting from the bottom and kind of pulling out. You can see here, we've got a couple of slots there. Got our hard drive slot, our 5.25 slot, and then we have our all of our naked little ports right there, which, which look kind of funny. I should be able to just drop this down in here and it's a perfect fit. Let's go. I think if I slide this back on, it should fit right in place. So unless I'm missing something or forgetting something, I think we're good to go here. I have all my cables plugged in. I got my SATA and my power plugged into my, my disk drive. Um, I don't have the side panels on yet, but we don't need, need to do that yet until we know this thing's working. So let's go ahead and pull this thing up. Um, I'm gonna plug it in, turn it on, and uh, yeah, we'll find out if this thing actually works. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's turn the power switch on. All right, that's on. Let's see, where's our power button here on the front? Oh, oh we got life. Okay, we got two fans. What was that noise? All right, well, the fans are all spinning. I think that noise of the dish was the disk drive, which I guess makes sense, maybe. Uh, well, let's see if it actually boots up, though. All right, there it is, guys. It's finally showing up here, and uh, I need to plug in my mouse and keyboard. I didn't have to restart the computer because it just like wouldn't show up at first. Who knows why? I was going to see if this Blu-ray drive even opens. Let's go. Oh, that is smooth. All right, guys. So after a couple hours of getting this thing booted up, set up, the BIOS set up, the, the getting Windows installed, which took like an hour in, in, in and of itself, and then getting GOG downloaded so I can play Cyberpunk 2077 um, and just seeing how this thing runs, we are finally in here. Uh, <laughs> I'm just skipping over a, a lot of stuff I've gone through, but we got this thing set to 1920 by 1080p. And we're gonna go ahead and go to the graphics here and kind of set up a few things and see what this thing runs at. So uh, we're gonna start at uh, ray tracing low, which seems to 
I think it's going to be pushing it too much because down here it set everything to ultra and high. Um, but we're going to, we'll try it out at 1080p and see what it does. So we'll run the benchmark over here, which is unfortunately hidden by my uh, FPS counter that I've made way too large. But uh, we'll run it and see what happens. Okay, so that wasn't bad. We just ran through the whole scene at 1080p. We got an average of almost 56 FPS. Uh, it actually looked pretty good for the majority of it, except for like one or two hiccups where it dropped down to like 20 frames for a very brief moment. Let's go back and um, let's uh, let's change this from ray tracing down to just, we'll try high. And I, th I feel like this is actually gonna run at a solid 60 FPS. Yeah, so that was pretty good. Uh, we were, yep, yeah, average of 59.94. So we're pretty much locked at 60 FPS that entire time. On high settings, uh, I feel like we might go to ultra and we'd probably hit like 50, 55. Um, I will say that earlier I tried 4K resolution and the best I was able to do was was medium. And even at medium, um, we were like averaging 48, maybe 55. Some somewhere between like 48, 55. I don't remember exactly, but it, it wasn't great. Um, so you can you can certainly play Cyberpunk in 2077 with this setup in 4K, but uh, but you're probably gonna have to play on like low settings or just suffer through a, a choppy choppy frames. But um. I'm not gonna play any of this game, but we're gonna go back and actually boot up one of the game. I'm gonna boot up Uncharted. I always just find it fun to try out a PlayStation game on a PC and just see how it runs. So we'll, we'll try out Uncharted Leg Legacy of Thieves Collection and just uh, see how this runs. <laughs> well, that's not a great sign when you're booting up to the game and the PlayStation logo is uh, choppy. But we're gonna play with the, the graphics here for a second and then see how it runs. Yeah, so we're on Ultra by default and we're obviously in red territory down here. So if you hit high, it actually brings us, brings us down here. So we'll go ahead and apply these changes. So yeah, 1080p on high, I feel like should be okay here. Yikes, so we're in the dark scene here and I hit like 25 FPS for a second. I cannot see anything because I'm in a bright room right now. But we're like, yeah, like a solid 40 FPS, maybe not, not even solid. Uh, we're more like mid thirties. There we go. So I switched to medium and we're now on 60 FPS. Oh, oh, no, that was a big, ooh, that's some hiccups there. But uh, I think you guys get the point. I, I need to flesh out some, some better ways to test these, uh, test our specs in future videos. But this is definitely a reasonable setup here in 2024 to play modern games at a, a reasonable resolution, 1080p, 60 FPS on you know medium to high settings, I'd say. And uh, yeah, one last thing I wanna do here is actually go back to the main menu and kind of try out the one feature that I basically built this PC for, and that's uh, playing, playing some discs here. So we got a Blu-ray. Let's go ahead and eject this bad boy. Elysium, never seen this movie before, but I have just a random Blu-ray sitting around. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this bad boy in and see what happens. I, like I said, I have not used a disc drive on a PC in ages. So let's just, uh, it should just pop up here in the side, but we'll see. All right, I got this thing in there and it just pops up as a little file right here. When I open it, it just opens some files. I don't, maybe I need to download a Blu-ray player or something. I'm not sure. Honestly, I have, wait, that's so interesting. There's a PS3 update file on here. Oh, that's actually awesome. Does this have any kind of PS3 functionality built in? That, that's, that's pretty funny. So this is PS3 update and it's got a PS3 update.pup file, which is basically like when you, I'm assuming you put this disc in your PS3 console and it'll force you to update if you want to play the play this Blu-ray. All right, well, we're getting an error here. I, I'm gonna have to do some more research and figure out how to <laughs> play Blu-rays, which is funny that you need to like, you have to do a workaround or, it's not just native, which is kind of crazy here in 2024. You can't just put a disc in and it works, but I'll look into that. Let me know down below if you have any, any other details, but guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below what you think about this PC and I'll see you next time.